Ooh. Hey guys, how's it going? Me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. Having a good time. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of update on my white, white tree frog bioactive habitat. So you guys know I've had these guys in my showroom since inception of The Bio Dude. Um, and I, these guys are absolutely amazing tree frogs to keep as pets. They are from Australia and Indonesia. Um, and they are one of my favorite fat frogs, um, with the exception of not only can they climb, they are usually very active as well and have that little bit of extra love cushions on the side. And they get, these guys come in so many different shapes and colors. You get ones that are green with blue eyes, blue with blue eyes. You get ones covered with the blue eyes with a little bit of the snowflake pattern. You have ones that can be bright blue and I, the list goes on and on and on. But I'm really lucky to have these guys in here because they are thriving and they have been doing great for me here at the BioDude for an extremely long time. Uh, the majority of my group is all males. I do have one female and I have bred this group uh, before, but I took a pretty long hiatus from doing so just for the simple fact of I don't have the space or the time to maintain a whole bunch of tadpoles and froglets of these guys right now. So I am making a conscious decision to take a break, but I do hope in the future I do get to start doing that again. Um, now, as you can see, this habitat is a 36 by 18 by 36. I have replaced these doors twice each side. I have replaced the latches twice. So long term, opening up the cage every day, we definitely had some issues. We did have to re-spline this up here as well, because as you can see, this portion up here is starting to break. Um, but you know, that's what happens when you've had a, had a habitat going for years and years and years. So for starters, we have, our, we, we have my, my drainage layer here. This is the hydro grow. As you can see, we're using a pretty dense layer of hydro grow in here, just for the simple fact of we do have a, mis a misting system hooked up to here that is running two, sorry, running, yep, two nozzles. So we want to make sure that as the water permeates down through the substrate, it's not ever going to, you know, surpass the drainage layer going into the substrate. You can see how long this tank has been set up. If you look at the very top, you see how it gets darker and darker. You can clearly see the screen. This whole top dry layer, this is just this is just biomass that has been broken down over time. Essentially leaves, nut pod, wood, cork bark pieces, tree leaves, pieces of moss, the whole nine yards. So to put it in, into perspective, the isopods have completely decimated. You can actually even see some pods in here crawling around. The dwarf whites. You can even see an earwig in here too. So the dwarf whites have just been absolutely demolishing um, anything that comes onto the ground here when it comes to moss or when it comes to shed uh, or when it comes to any types of uh, de decaying plant matter. So for the cleanup crew in here, we are using dwarf white isopods. There are some earwigs established in here as well as springtails. I have seen life stages of all three over the course, uh, over the lifespan of this habitat, and it has been remarkable how well everything has been growing. We use a water dish that's big enough for them to soak in. And of course, we always do the, we always do the cork bark floating in the water method to catch any isopods, roaches or crickets so that way they can easily get out. Uh, you guys can clearly see the hardscape. We used a whole bunch of ghost wood. We used a whole bunch of cork bark tubes and branches and then a whole bunch of different plants. Now I'm going to showcase some of the plants to you guys just so that way y'all can y'all can can kind of see what plants we've been using for the dumpies because as you know with their given size with their weight they are destructive and they are messy. Two things that must be paid attention to when putting together their habitat. So, for starters, we have a whole bunch of different ferns in here. Uh, we have, uh, we have a, a beautiful bird's nest fern that's growing out of this cork bark branch up here. We actually have it wrapped in a net pot with some, with some spag moss, and it is thriving in that net pot with some spag moss. Uh, we sprinkled a little bit of bio shot around the roots so that way it got a little bit of that nutrition so it's not really being kept in soil. Uh, as far as your larger, denser plants, we do have a beautiful alocasia here. Now, I love, love, love these alocasias because, I mean, just look, look how big they are. For one thing, 
Two, they can handle the weight of the frog, which is really beneficial. And three, with them sitting flat up like this, they have a tendency to hold water, which provides another opportunity zone for your dumpies if they need to soak or if they need a little bit more hydration. As far as bromeliads here, we have this big old, big old beautiful brom right here that actually is that beautiful pink in the middle. Um, it does have the minor serrated edges. So when I was picking the bromeliads out for this build, I was very, very cautious to make sure I wasn't picking any specimens that have sharp serrated edges because these guys, like any other amphibian, they have really delicate skin. So we wanna make sure that things that we're putting in there can't cut them or brace or cause a significant amount of abrasions. And we have a smaller bromeliad right into the tube here, uh, which seems to be doing exceptionally well as well. As far as the side and the top here, we have a flourishing Marble Queen Pothos. I love this Pothos because of its high variegation pattern, but it also grows like a weed. Really, really easy to grow. It can grow epiphytically. It can grow on the ground. And most importantly, it is very easy to take care of. So it does well with early entry level beginner mistakes. And then last but not least, we have this beautiful Dracenia right here. And with this, we're probably going to have to cut back soon because it's starting to like grow up onto the screen and pushing the screen up. So we probably only have about a week or two until we have to cut this back uh, and potentially replant that section into something else. We do have various types of mosses spread around from pillow moss to sheet moss. It's fairly dry right now because I don't let these guys get too wet in their habitat. As far as lighting is concerned, we are running two 22-inch BioDude Glow & Grow LEDs. We are running a BioDude T5 Solar Grow that also includes a, a low UVB uh, Ferguson zone right around of a little under half of, half of a percent. So it's a really low amount of UVB. And then we're also running a very shallow heat source. So you can see here, up here, there's many places for them to bask. Here, 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 and here. We have a 25 watt daytime bulb right here that puts that hot spot right around 83 degrees with my showroom being consistently around 72. We have found that the dumpies love to bask. They love to be out in the UVB and bask while absorbing some of those infrared A and B waves. But what we really found is when we are coming into work and right before all the lights turn on, it is very loud in here. And but I just wanted to show you guys just how well the, this terra fauna is doing. I really can't tell you how old it is, but it's been set up for a really, really long time. But just to put it into perspective, I'm going to pull some of this substrate out and you can just see how well everything is doing. It's not too wet. It is maintaining its humidity value perfectly well. And I picked up one scoop. And just in that scoop, I'm already seeing isopods. That is a really, really good sign for, uh, for a terrarium that's been set up as long as this one. Another really good sign is the fact that we can see our root systems. So we can see the extensive root systems here, 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 here. And honestly, throughout all four sides of the habitat, you can see the root systems growing all the way down to the substrate. And what that also tells me is that there isn't toxic sections or oversaturated sections of the substrate that could potentially harm your plants. So overall, looking at this habitat, it's been thriving. It's been going really well. And there's a couple loose crickets in here um, that the dumpies have not caught yet but I expect that this cage, this cage will be completely empty by the time that I uh, get back here on Thursday. But again, I just wanted to show you guys really quick. I haven't really showcased this build for you guys. I haven't really showcased this frog for you guys. If you want more of an in-depth look about their care, about what we feed them or anything like that, drop a line. I'll, I'll do a complete video just on the whites for you guys if you're interested, show you all the life stages, all that good stuff, because they really are amazing tree frogs. And hands down, they're one of the best frogs for beginners, hands down. Um, I really hope you guys appreciated this shorty. I like coming in here and just kind of soaking it all in, man. I love it. My name's Josh Halter. I'm the owner and founder of The BioDude. You can visit my website, thebiodude.com. Come here to my store Monday through Friday and Saturday. Hit that like and subscribe button. The dude abides.
Mm. There you go. Who is it? 